I see there's a new series of staggering stories. That's the show where they redub old films with silly voice. Yes. In effect, they won't get an audience. <laughs> Look, you see there's completely no one watching it at all. Hello, Falcon. I told you to get lost. The producers want you to star in the show. Goodness knows why. I wouldn't be associated with that program if you bought me a new blazer. Hey, look over there! Oh, not another staggering <laughs> stories character. They've redubbed him to death. He's got a boiled sweet on his finger. Tomorrow, 7.15 on BBC Two. Head straight to BBC Two on Monday night for the first of three journeys to the birthplace of humanity and discover a wealth of wildlife in the Great Rift Valley. At nine, heavenly bodies and hellish nightmares from the outer limits. Are you? You got nothing at all on these people? If you leave this moment, Henry, you die. At 9.45, the life and deaths of mail order shopping, when you could buy everything, including the house to hold your mail order kitchen sink. Monday night on BBC Two. Terrifying wartime memories on BBC One shortly, the true life drama of the USS Indianapolis and its fated crew who faced the mission of the shark. BBC Two spends the next hour in the company of comedy, and in 35 minutes, Jerry Seinfeld gets into all sorts of trouble in the back of a limousine. Well, now on BBC Two, brace yourself for a poke in the eye from Armando Iannucci. Go fighting's exciting. Discover discussion. Swap guns for tongues. Thanks for that. Uh, a magnificent applause from the 2,000-handed lady at the back. <laughs> and welcome to the Saturday Night Armistice. I'm Armando Iannucci. Imagine Vanessa Feltz eaten by a little man. <laughs> and I'm Philip Scott, a 14-year-old boy here on work experience, unpaid. Imagine PJ and Duncan without any hopes or plans for the future. <laughs> And concuss me with planks. It was a bad <laughs> whore of a week for the Conservatives, defeated in the Saddleworth by-election. However, they revealed plans to avoid further election failure by the setting up of a rapid reaction majority. <laughs> a permanently airborne fleet of 75,000 Tory voters ready to land on a marginal constituency <laughs> within days of the calling of a by-election. Meanwhile, as summer temperatures officially grew hotter than a boiled puppy, Britain went sweat gland mad. People stopped work and simply lay around on their bare bellies, including the staff and judges of the Old Bailey, who allowed barristers to take their tops off, conduct prosecutions in shorts, or just ogle at passing witnesses. In Northern Ireland, get the funny props. Oh. The funny props. <laughs> In Northern Ireland, the government made further concessions over terrorist prisoners, allowing them to be transferred from the mainland and to sell all the merchandise they made in prison workshops, including these no surrender fridge magnets <laughs> and jars of dirty protest fun putty. <laughs> yes. And finally, a victorious and bursting Paddy Ashdown announced plans to win over voters not yet snapped up by Labour, the under-12s. <laughs> As from next week, he's presenting a new children's TV show called Paddy's Roundabout. Welcome to Paddy's Roundabout. <laughs> All right. Oh, Philip, I normally run over there at this point. Could yeah. you do that for me? Oh. Yeah, just do it now. <laughs> anyway, and 
And uh, joining me here on the... Um, 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 what's that? <laughs> oh, that's Philip. He's here on work experience. Oh. Yeah, it's a new scheme. They just take kids who are obviously not too bright and uh, <laughs> just put them in the workplace so that we don't waste education on them. <laughs> is, is he just going to stand there all, all the show, like this? Just... No, 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 no. I mean, we're going to be teaching them sort of life skills and, um, you know, learn about what it's like, uh, you know, in the workplace. Could you get some tea? <laughs> and uh, joining me on the Saturday Night Armistice are David Schneider and Peter Bainham, two of the hottest men since records began. <laughs> David, how hot are you? Uh, well, Amanda, I, I, I'm actually so hot that people in certain parts of the country can't look at me for more than 35 minutes without burning. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. Peter, how about you? Amanda, I'm so hot, my kidneys wear shorts. <laughs> Record-breaking. Um, also on tonight's show is Sir David Attenborough. Uh, he's going to be hanging over the programme like a pregnant owl, uh, <laughs> telling us all about his amazing animals. A curious creature, half worm, half herring, provides the ultimate in parental protection. A thousand million baby antelopes develop inside the female, and she keeps them there until they're so advanced that they can fly. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> More from the Prince of Plankton later. <laughs> now, uh, back to the heat, and Britain went into meltdown this week, uh, quite literally, as uh, some of these children discovered. <laughs> and uh, if anyone in the audience is still worried about the heat, um, I mean, by all means, come forward and, and use this. You'll see them around city centres now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a public deodorant point. <laughs> and you just... I mean, if you hear it... Just do that. It's so sort of, ugh. It is all under there. It's it's ugh. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. And people are going to all sorts of lengths now to get a bit of air on them. I don't know if you noticed that um, you can now get motorcycle helmets with sunroofs mm. that you can just open up, let a bit of air in. I mean, the only problem is they're easier to nick. That's <laughs> and also, um, here's something actually you might like to see if you're interested in warm businessmen, which I am. Now, it's an item of clothing. <laughs> For the busy executive who wants to stay cool in the office, but go all smart at a moment's notice. <laughs> now, this might look like a perfectly ordinary pair of shorts. But take a closer look. It's a suit, that's right. There's a pair of shoes there. There's uh, tie arms very subtly tucked in, I think you'll agree. Now, if the weather turns cold or the office is visited by a member of the clergy, <laughs> drawstrings here and explosive springs here will roll the shorts up and down into a fully functional pinstripe suit. From sexy to smart in seconds. Britain's gone barbecue mad as well. I don't know if, if you know this, but uh, if you can't afford your own barbecue, uh, there's now a huge municipal barbecue, uh, <laughs> which until last week was Wembley Stadium. <laughs> and as you can see, um, the stadium has been packed with over 12 and a half million charcoal briquettes. <laughs> and there's a giant Cumberland sausage. And actually, you may be delighted to know that there's a Rod Stewart concert trapped underneath all that uh, charcoal. <laughs> But all this hot and viscous weather, it just gets everyone talking about global warming and the worries of global warming. Yeah. And, you know, that's fair enough, and I think we really ought to try and do something about it. I've got an idea. What we could do is arrange for everyone in the world to go out into their garden at the same time with a spoon, dig up a spoonful of earth and blow on it. And if we all did it at the same time, especially the Chinese, that would lower the temperature. <laughs> and, of course, if that didn't work, you could just put the earth to one side. To cool. Oh, to cool. Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what you can do, there's an experiment I know they're trying out now, is to let the breeze in, and they're doing this by opening up a little window in the sky. <laughs> you know, watch, watch this. Little, little skylight on a latch to let out all the heat above Peterborough. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if global warming is such a bad thing, because if you think about it, by, say, the middle of the next century, we'll have run out of oil and petrol and fossil fuels and stuff. Um, so we should really try and get the whole world as hot as possible mm. so that it lasts us as long as possible mm. from then. <laughs> 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 and actually, if we pump out enough chemicals and petrol and crap into the air, we'll probably be able to run our cars off it. Huh? <laughs> just put a big pipe up into the atmosphere and just light a flame and, you know, it'll take the fire. Ah, great, the teas and uh, coffees. Oh, so thirsty. Where are they? Um, it's just that you didn't give me any money for the teaser coffee. Didn't you, didn't you bring any yourself? 
Well, I've got a fiver for my lunch. Oh, well, well, that'll do. You use that. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, Philip, yeah. aren't you being a bit rude? Sorry? Have you asked the ladies and gentlemen if they want tea? <laughs> yeah. Go on. What would you like? Would you like tea or coffee? Tea, please. Tea. And any sugar with that? No sugar. OK, and what would you like, tea or coffee? Yeah. <laughs> and if anyone at home wants tea or coffee, uh, <laughs> then ring up one of these numbers, or you can just phone us direct and yeah. ask to speak to Philip. <laughs> now then, among the many elaborate deceptions perpetrated throughout the 20th century, Perhaps the cruelest is the one I make each week, pretending that the little furry puppet I speak to is real. <laughs> and it's time to maintain that deceit now, so please allow yourself to be easily fooled as we meet Mr Tony Blair! <laughs> Mr. Tony Blair, <laughs> what are you doing with all these bikers? What's that? They're your motorcade. <laughs> you met them at a policeman's disco. <laughs> you got chatting, you liked what you saw, and before you knew it, they started to outride you. <laughs> Mr. Tony Blair, you do get into some sticky patches. <laughs> Look, why don't you put your men away? Go on. <laughs> well, well, this cloth gets chaps disappear. Let's take another peek now down the mouths of David Attenborough's amazing animals. The plains of East Africa, a group of Thompson's gazelles, and the hunters would hunt gazelles. <laughs> With food so difficult to find, grazing becomes very dangerous indeed. <laughs> These five-inch monsters can disembowel a lion with their leathery lips and then become enormous. Day for the Troms. Amanda? Yeah? <laughs> now, if I were to say to you, <laughs> Britain isn't a very violent country, <laughs> the chances are you just look at me as if I were an escaped idiot. <laughs> of course it is, and don't have me otherwise. <laughs> Violence has become acceptable as was proven recently with the discovery that boxing matches were being organised by the General Synod of the Church of England. <laughs> but it's clear that, like the wet, wet, wet hit from Four Weddings and a Funeral would say, if you change the word love to violence, violence is all around. <laughs> so, for example, here I am at home and violence is coming at me through my television screen. Now, a lot of people think there's nothing we can do about TV violence, but what we're forgetting is that, as a viewer, you have the most powerful weapon at your disposal, the weapon of choice. And my weapon of choice today is this. <laughs> um, David? C can you have just switched it off? No, 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 because no, it could have been switched on again by a child or, or, or uh, a tramp or a passing gust of wind, perhaps. That's a pretty good point. Oh! Because what David has realised is that the only way to combat violence is by standing up to it with a baseball bat. You see, this truth is at the heart of our new Saturday Night Armistice anti-violence campaign. Let's kick violence in the face. <laughs> That's the title of our campaign, and we've put it together with this information pack showing you all the different ways you can kick violence in the face. Or if you feel very strongly about the matter, you can send off for your very own martial arts nunchaka <laughs> with uh, smash violence engraved on it. They really do work as well. And we've also got some uh, newsletters and some let's piss on violence transfers <laughs> that we'll be taking around schools with a big dog. And earlier today, we took loads of these packs into the streets along with a massive dummy representing violence and asked people to confront it. This is Ealing Shopping Centre. And this is violence. So let's kick it in the face. 
But say, you know, this say if this represents violence, and um, if that was to, you know, what would you like to say to violence, really? Oh. Try to control yourself a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> right. Does a campaign like Let's Kick Violence in the Face kind of appeal to you? Oh, yeah. Are you, are you kind of worried by violence in society? Yeah, what's happening in society, definitely. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> you prefer to, like, in your car or on your front window, put in a, a smash violence nunchaker? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> So is that where the jugular is, yeah? Yeah, and, and you, you press hard enough, you yeah. can put anybody out. So uh, if violence came into your store, what would you do? Throw it out, throw straight it away. Out. <laughs> you nasty little child, you little toad! <laughs> Get out and don't fall back! So, there you are. We've just proved you don't need violence to make graphic fight scenes really disturbing and therefore good. And the BBC understands this and this week agreed to tone down violence in its programmes, turning once graphic films such as Pulp Fiction, Death on the Nile and Judge Dredd into TV versions filled with pleasantness. Rapid fire. <laughs> What's that, Mr. Tony? Hang on a minute. Where's Mr. Tony Blair? Where's Mr. Tony? Okay. Philip, have you seen Mr. Tony Blair? What, that toy thing? <laughs> That's not a toy. That's Mr. Tony Blair. What have you done with him? Well, I was just tidying the desk while you were over there. I was using my initiative. Philip, you're not here to use your initiative. You're here because you're cheap. What have you done with him? I've tidied him into the bin. <laughs> you did... You did what? Sorry. Well, sorry's not good enough. Go and look through the bins for him. Go now. Absolute idiot. You arse! <laughs> Peter, I believe you take a strong interest in the welfare of children. That's right, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> the child support agency, the quasi-Nazi anti-dad machine, <laughs> has tried to soften its negative image lately by allowing divorced fathers more flexible rules of access to their children. From now on, if any of the fathers move to an area too far away from their original children, they can borrow surrogate children for the weekend. <laughs> from a local child library. The libraries contain children of all shapes and sizes. <laughs> Do you have a Robert in it now? Um, let's have a look. No, I'm afraid he's out. Uh, we've got a... David or Michael, they're quite similar. No, I think I'll have a look around. Thanks. There is no. Cleverer or more interesting children are for reference only and may only be visited within the library. Other children can be taken out for anything from a lunch to a whole weekend. We need to back by four, please. But hamburger areas are also available inside the libraries for busier dads. Hiya. A sliding scale of fines is imposed on dads who bring back the children late or who have lost them altogether. Mm -hmm. Um, you seem to have got one child outstanding. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, she's in the bank. Oh, there we go. This week, the Labour Party were attacked by the Liberals for using underhand methods in a by-election, such as putting a lot of effort into trying to win it <laughs> and driving around the constituency in an impressive bus. Now, this is all part of Labour's new populist approach with the electorate. 
typified by the fact that the Young Socialist Movement has now been relaunched as Labour 18 to 30. <laughs> with a billboard campaign featuring Harriet Harman and the slogan, there's plenty more where she came from. <laughs> Vote Labour, we know you want some. <laughs> Another popular move was the decision to publish Labour policies in the form of a magic eye book, <laughs> which millions of people will be able to read by holding the policies close to their face and then looking at them in a sort of unfocused way in order to see the shape of a swarm of bees, an overturned wagon, plans for the fairer distribution of wealth and some caribou. <laughs> and with establishment backing, this summer's Labour conference will now come from St Paul's Cathedral. New Labour, New Britain. Peter, yes, what? the miniaturised area. Oh, yes, Yay! 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 Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to my miniaturised area. Thank you. <laughs> Imagine now if you had access to one massive worldwide bank of security cameras. Would you become some new kind of fantastic million-eyed policeman, able to halt all crime in an instant for the good of mankind, <laughs> or would you just nose on people? <laughs> OK, let's have somebody important. Um, Someone important? OK. Yep. Um, Robbie from Take That. Now, yes, this is it. There's been a lot of controversy, a lot of nasty rumours about why he left Take That. Now, yeah. here is their last ever gig. Now, don't get tearful. This is sad. He's finishing. Now, look at that horrifying mound of puberty there, going mental. <laughs> now, now, off they go. Look at them all. Oh, God. Now, here they come down the corridor. Now, Robbie goes into his dressing room on the security camera. Yeah. Now, watch this when he takes off all that thick clothing. So, dries his face. Off with all the thick clothes. Oh, <laughs> He's a tiny child! That's why he left. He's four years old. He's got the rhythm. He's got the record. He's, that's it. He's, four. He's got to go to school. He's got to go to school. He's, yeah, he's gone. It's going to be fine. Well, then, fans of fans will be pleased to hear I met a clump of them this week in a drinking club uh, devoted to perhaps the most popular man in Britain, certainly the most beautiful. Here's how I... <laughs> Philip! Philip, this is just... It's all tatty. That's how I got on. The areas which the Tories previously regarded as their own, have taken them on their own ground and beaten them. Oh, go on, Jack. 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 Go on, Okay. Yeah, so, who are you big fans of? That's uh, that's Jack Straw, the Labour Home Affairs spokesman. <laughs> 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 Is it his politics that, that make you interested in him, or is it his personality? About his yeah. Everything about so charisma, yeah. style, yeah. panache. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got a gift of the gap, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's got class, got sophistication. No, I mean, he's the sort of bloke who'll get out of the bath to have a piss, you know what I mean? I don't think he's necessarily a poetry. You know, he's, oh, he's, 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 he's a friend of the people. He wants what we want. He wants what yeah. we all want. He's fighting for us. Yeah. Would you like to meet him? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Best yeah. on your endeavours. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we're going to try and go off and meet him today then. Yeah. We are. Yeah. 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 Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Yes. Yes. yes! yes! We're the um, North London firm. Are you coming to see Jack Straw? Yeah. Straw dogs. Straw dogs. Have you been to uh, Central Lobby? We've been down there. We missed him. Apparently, he's yeah. here and he's coming out soon. Yeah. That's yeah. what we believe. So we've got a shirt from the we side. believe he's here. <laughs> Jack Straw. 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 J
Now just stop crying. <laughs> now it's time to hunt the old woman. <laughs> this is the competition that's got the whole country geriatric crazy. <laughs> what we do is we release a genuine old woman in front of other programmes, unsuspecting TV cameras, and it's up to you to spot her binting around in front of them. <laughs> We've had hundreds of sightings. Uh, the first one uh, came out of the Saturday Night Armistice receptacle from uh, Thomas Robertson, age 14, from Marple. And uh, he says he spotted her uh, early uh, on Saturday evening on BBC One. Let's have a look. Right, National Lottery programme. There's Anthea Turner going out to uh, fund another opera house. And <laughs> now, hang on. There she is! <laughs> And there's an old man! <laughs> an old man! Confused! Well done, uh, Thomas Robertson. Actually, you don't win the big prize because there was an earlier sighting of the old woman in an unexpected place. And the first person to spot that was uh, Angela Stokes, who sent in this letter, including a drawing of her. <laughs> and um, she says she spotted her at about 7.25 last Thursday. Let's have a look and see where you can spot her. Now, she's not dancing. Now... Bit tricky this one. TV and spotter. We pull back, move down. There's Dale Winter. Right. There she is. Come on, get in, Jim. Get in. That's it. Yay! Yay! <laughs> that also incorporated another competition, which was Hunt the Dale Winton, um, which is a lot easier. Uh, certainly, Angela, you're uh, this week's winner, and you will receive a star prize, the Saturday Night Armistice hors d'oeuvre tree. <laughs> and this week's hors d'oeuvres are rolled luncheon meat and quail's eggs. <laughs> and they've been chosen for us this week by Nicholas Witchell. So thanks very much, Nicholas, for your choosing. More senile intrusions for next week. So get hunting and get calling. You could be a big winner. <laughs> Right, it's uh, nearly the end of the show, so, uh, Philip, what are you doing over there? Come and join us. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Have oh, you been enjoying the show? Right. Yeah, um, I haven't really seen much of it, cos, like, I haven't been involved, cos I've been outside. <laughs> right, yeah, but, but what you've seen, you've enjoyed, yeah? It was quite good, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the people at home would think about it. Um, it was all right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. Are all your mates in, or they all come to see yeah, you on the box? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. none of them have really heard or seen the show. Right. Well, right. So don't they, don't they like comedy? Oh, they like comedy. <laughs> right, well, anyway, we're here <laughs> to learn. So, uh, fire away. Is there anything you want to ask us? Um, these bits around the table, yeah. Yeah. do you think yeah. they work? <laughs> yeah, what do you think they work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, have you got some suggestions, then, how to improve things? Well, it all seems a bit 
under a hearse, you know, you haven't well, thought about it. Well, it's not spontaneous. I mean, maybe the bloke who writes the script isn't funny enough. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, she and I thought you had to be good looking to be on TV. Oi! Well, right. <laughs> Does anyone want more tea or coffee? I mean, you're all a bit odd looking. Well, Shut it! Now, did you mean him or me? Come on, say it. <laughs> no, just go, go on. Bye. Yeah, go and do some. Yeah. See, see if anyone on BBC One needs some tea. This week, calls were made to place gambling warnings on lottery scratch cards after evidence they were addictive and that Monte Carlo has now become the lottery scratch card capital of the world. Just <laughs> lately, a lot of unfair flag has been directed at the posh, snobby, arty-farty arts tossers for sucking, <laughs> for sucking the purses of decent, ordinary lottery players who just want to win a fortune and dump all their friends. <laughs> but it's not all one way. The arts have now agreed to give something back and work for their lottery handouts. Please welcome the New Style Arts Lottery Draw. The show starts with Anthea Turner, tonight played by the Royal Ballet's prima ballerina, Jessica Quirk, as she dances an exuberant opening monologue and introductory quips. Anthea is followed by members of Nottingham's Paper Fist Performance and Movement Workshop, who will be using money from the lottery to protest against their dependence on money from the lottery. <laughs> and there's some men rolling around in paint. <laughs> Joining Anthea, as always, to ensure fair play, Charles Fontenoy from the Royal Opera House, Covent Garden. Sono l'uomo che porti a branchi guanti Sono l'uomo che porti a branchi guanti Always a popular part of the show now, Anthea banters balletically with last week's winner. <laughs> Here, represented by the Quadro Wind Quintet. The choice of lottery machines this week lies in the hands of the Bristol Old Vic. <laughs> Me, John. You have to tell me. No. <laughs> I can't. I need to know, please. It's Guinevere, isn't it? <laughs> oh my god. It's Arthur! Yes! It's Arthur! Arthur it is! And now an undoubted highlight as we hear from the Lottery's very own fortune-telling poet laureate, Mystic Ted Hughes! A pile of eyes crying in the corner. Eleven of them. Eleven? <laughs> the vast last woman on the earth. Wrinkled hips, paprika red. How's the name? Mark! Mark? <laughs> and some bus drivers will be celebrating too! And joining Anthea now, this week's celebrity, arts guru, Melvin Bragg! <laughs> But now it's time for the big draw, but instead of balls, this machine here is loaded with 49 priceless pieces of art. <laughs> selflessly donated by British galleries and museums. That's right, Peter. Um, here we've got the uh, Hay Wayne. Uh, we'll just put all these in. Uh, that there is a Stradivarius. Um, that's from the Philharmonic. Thank you. Um, this, I believe, is Henry Moore's sculpture. There we go. In that goes. Uh, I've got a scroll there. That's the uh, Mappa Mundi. There it is. And an actor from the Royal Shakespeare Company. Okay, in they go. There they go. The lid goes down, and Charles Fontenoy gives the signal for the lottery draw to begin. <laughs> Spin the drum, and so Anthea, the bloke in the white glass, and Austin Melvin Brad turn the drum throughout the country, lottery punters, and none of you are lovers watch with bated breath as it comes to a halt. <laughs> and it, it is open up, and out come the six pieces of art and the bonus art. 
And right. who will be the lucky winners? Now, uh, David's just <laughs> rearranging these uh, pieces of art in order of value. Um, that's the value before they went into the drum, obviously. And the winning pieces are um, the Shakespeare and Actor, the Henry Moore... It's Churchill's the, Papers. Uh, Churchill's Papers there, uh, the Henry Moore Sculpture and Stradivarius. So, if you chose these pieces, just get in touch with your local Museum of Modern Art, just turn up, help yourself to a picture, they won't mind. <laughs> Thank you very much, the Arts Lottery people and their art. Remaining funds left over from this week's draw, we are going off to celebrate with a magnificent Royal Gala Arts Curry. <laughs> so, good night, and remember, keep playing, cos next week it could be you. Not you, don't be stupid, but maybe you. <laughs> good night. He was unconscious in less than a minute. Death Row.